All right. So welcome to today's workshop. This is Welcome to the Libraries with the UT Libraries. My name is Carissa Powell and I use she, her pronouns. I am a student success librarian and I work with a lot of our first year composition students who are in English 101, 102, etc. And hi everyone, my name is Grace Darrell. I also use she, her pronouns. I am an online learning librarian here at UTK. And um, I also work with general education students a lot with public speaking classes, and I focus a lot on online learning in the libraries. Um, okay, cool. I was about to answer that question, but Carissa got it in the chat. All right. So today we're going to be going over a lot of our in person services on campus that are available to you as well as a lot of our online services that are available if you're off campus or at home. And then we wanna make sure that everyone feels really comfortable and confident getting help from a librarian. And then we'll answer any questions that you have as we go and at the end. So to get us started, we would love if everyone either scanned the QR code on their screen or went to slido.com and typed in 7335888. We would love to know what you want to know about using the libraries so that we go over things that are most relevant to you. So everyone take a minute or two to fill that out. You're also welcome to put things in the chat. Um, if you do put something in the chat, just a heads up again that it will, um, well, actually, no, it won't because we're not, we're just putting this on YouTube. So actually it should be fine. Sorry, as you can see, Carissa and I are people and <laughs> sometimes we get, we forget things and are a little frazzled. Um, so great, seeing things come in on the Slido, excellent. If you have, if you prefer to use the chat, feel free to use the chat um, and we can pull in your answers without saying your name um, and leave you anonymous. So, but this is great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm seeing some really great things. Um, I see people wanting to know how to use OneSearch, find books. Um, we're definitely going to be going over good study spaces. Um, we're going to be talking. Yeah, these are all great things. I'm going to leave it maybe for like 30 more seconds if anyone else has something they really want to make sure we go over during today's session. Yeah, I'm just jotting down some of these. Um, thank you all so much for your for your ideas, for your questions. Um, we are, a lot of these things we've already planned on covering, so that's great. Um, and the things that we have not, um, we will definitely add um, so that we can give you answers to these questions as well. Yeah, thank you so much for putting these out there. And I hope this also helps folks feel um, very validated that even if you didn't ask one of these questions, maybe you were thinking it. Like I see multiple people wanting to know how to reserve a study room. So we will definitely, definitely talk about that. All right, we're gonna jump into it. Yeah, all right. So as you probably saw this morning, um, campus guidance around COVID-19 and masks have changed again. Um, so as of this morning, um, we are requiring masks in library spaces, but we are open. 
Um, so the libraries are definitely open to support you this semester. Um, Starbucks is also open. If you're a Starbucks fan, I'm sure if you've been in the library, you have seen that line in Hodges. Um, Starbucks is open for you. Um, the computer labs in the libraries are open for you. The stacks are open. All of um, all of the spaces in Hodges Library are open to you this semester. Um, the only difference is that um, last week we were not requiring masks in the library spaces as a general rule, and now uh, we are requiring masks. Um, we follow the campus guidance. So the university, um, the chancellor sent out a message this morning about masks being required in indoor spaces um, and the libraries are no exception to that. Um, so if you walk into the library, you will be expected to be wearing a mask, whether you're in, um, again, whether you're waiting in line in Starbucks or you're checking out a book, um, the only exception is when you're eating and drinking. Um, this also includes things like staircases, elevators, um, classrooms, open study areas, all of that. So if you have um, questions about what the university's policies are in terms of COVID, um, in terms of masking requirements, all of that, um, we just recommend that you stay updated. Uh, keep checking your email. And then the university also has a coronavirus website that Elijah put in the chat. Again, the libraries do follow the campus guidance. So whatever campus says is what the libraries are doing as well. Um, so we just wanted to let you know what to expect when you come in person. Um, and now Carissa is going to tell you a little bit more about what um, what the different libraries on campus are. All right, so we've got three main libraries on campus I wanted folks to know about. The first one is Hodges, which is kind of like the main library on campus. Um, it is our largest library. It has six floors. It is kind of like a great place to go. They're all great places to go. Hodges is the one my office is in. These are fun facts about Hodges. Um, Hodges also has a lot of other services that I'll be talking about later on in this session. Um, for anyone who is on the Ag campus a lot, we have got the Pendergrass Library. Um, if you are in Ag, Environmental Sciences, Natural Sciences, Food, Vet Med, um, and you find yourself on that side of campus a lot, that might be a great place to go. Also, if you just have a random class on the Ag campus, you do not have to be an Ag student to go to this library. Um, it's just a great place. It is in the Vet Med Center. And then the last library I wanted to mention is the Music Library. This is in the Haslam Music Center. Um, again, maybe your classes, you have a class in that area, you want to stop by that library. Um, this is mostly the library that has the most music and music education reference and research services. Um, Elijah put links to chat for the hours of all of those. All of our libraries stay open slightly different hours depending on the day, depending on the time in the semester. So I strongly recommend just double checking the hours before you head to the library. Um, especially if you're going to a library, maybe you don't go to as often. Um, the libraries can change if it's a holiday, if it's a school break. So strongly recommend just looking at the hours first. But all of these buildings are for you. Um, this is your campus. So we want to make sure that you are comfortable and welcome in all of these spaces. So um, it's a place that you can stop by to ask for help or just a place to plug in your laptop in between classes. Yeah, we have also within those buildings, so many spaces for you to take advantage of. Um, if you have been into Hodges or if you've been into Pendergrass or Divine, um, you've probably seen, I mean, you've seen the space, um, but maybe you've gone around and explored a little bit, um, but all of our locations have spaces where you can chill out, plug in your laptop, as Carissa said, work on group projects, study. Um, 
I saw lots of questions in our Slido a little bit earlier about study spaces, reserving study rooms, all of that. Um, so we're gonna touch on that here. And then if you all have questions about that later or would like us to walk through what that looks like, we can do that um, in the Q&A portion for sure. Um, but we do have both quiet and collaborative spaces in Hodges. So um, Hodges Library has six floors and then one stop is the ground floor. Um, so on this, on the six floors, um, we have quiet floors and then we have more conversational floors. So when you walk into Hodges Library and you see Starbucks, the Starbucks floor is the second floor. Um, that is a conversational floor. And the third floor and the sixth floor are also floors where you can talk, have conversations with people, um, take an online class if you need to do that and you need to interact. Um, those are places where you can talk and people won't be upset with you. <laughs> um, the first, fourth, and fifth floors are quiet floors. Um, so if you've been into Hodges, the first floor has the um, graduate study room, the graduate commons, and then also the reading room, which is a quiet room. Um, if you know about those um, those floors, there's also special collections on that floor. So that's the floor underneath the Starbucks floor. Um, then you can also take the elevators or the stairs to the fourth and fifth floors, and those are quiet floors as well. So those are really good places to go if you want quiet while you're studying, um, if you need to like watch a lecture, if you need to do some reading or some research, something that um, requires some silence. Um, the first fourth and fifth floors are where you will be able to go and not have a lot of noise going around. Um, we also have study rooms that you can reserve on, um, we have quiet floors and we have conversational rooms as well. Um, we have spaces, we have study carols, which are spaces kind of on the perimeter of some of our floors. Um, so just so many options, so many places for you to be able to go and study. Again, if you have more questions about that, or if you wanna kind of explore the different spaces that we have um, at the library, you can find more um, on the library website. Again, we've put that link into chat. Um, so you can find a little bit more again about the hours if you have questions about that. But you can also see the different spaces that we have in the libraries, um, read more about them, and you can also reserve study rooms from that link as well. Um, like I said, if you have questions about that, if you really want to see what it looks like to reserve study rooms, um, we can definitely go over that in the Q&A portion. Um, or later on, if you want to reserve a study room but don't know how, you can chat with us. We can let you know that as well. Um, but you are able to reserve study rooms up to two weeks in advance for two consecutive hours. So that is an option if you really want to find somewhere um, to study or if you need a group project or something like that. All right, so some other services we have in person are printing. I feel like this is a question that a lot of students have, especially when they're new on campus. So these are just some details um, about the cost of printing, some of the different printing you can do. Um, we, I accidentally clicked on the link, so we're gonna now explore the link that Elijah shared in chat. Um, you can print from a couple different places in the library. I think the most popular one a lot of people go to is the second floor of Hodges. Um, you do have to put money on your, one of the ways you can do this is by putting money on your ball card. And there is a cash machine in Hodges library where you can just like put cash onto your card if you need to do that, or um, you can add money onto your ball card another way online. Um, and if you have any questions about printing, there are so many people physically in the library to answer questions, um, especially like if it's your first time printing in the library, it might, it could be a little confusing, but that's a great place to come and print. And um, if you run into any issues, there's a lot of staff at a couple service desks on that second floor to help. All right, um, someone had asked in the Slido about tutoring. And while this is not a service librarians offer, we have space in the library 
where our partners, our academic partners on campus are. So um, the Writing Center does have place in the second floor of Hodges and Elijah put the link in chat. The Writing Center is really amazing. Um, if you just, they're just awesome. They do a lot of different services. So you can explore the link in chat. Um, they also have their main location on campus, but they do have this satellite location in the library, which is very cool. Uh, the other, another service to mention in the physical library of Hodges is the studio, which is a media production design lab. So if at any point in your time here at UT, you have an assignment that requires some type of media editing or design or audio or video editing, this is a great place to come to. They also do poster printing. So if you ever start uh, getting into doing a research poster, um, they are awesome people to talk to. You can stop by their desk and they have special chat hours. So you can ask questions or just if you're running into an issue, you can talk with them. Uh, we will also have someone coming from the studio to do a workshop later on this workshop series. So if that is of interest to you, definitely I encourage you to come to that one. All right, so we are now going to switch and talk about our online services a little bit. Um, again, if there's something about an in-person service or something about using the libraries in person that you still have a question about, jot it down um, and we will definitely take time in that Q&A portion to answer those questions. So if there's something you still have a question about using the library in person, don't worry, um, just save it in your brain and um, we will address that later on. All right, so online services. If you don't wanna to come to the library, um, or maybe it's the middle of the night and you don't want to leave your dorm room, that's also fine. Um, you don't have to be in the library to get help, which is awesome. Um, so if you have questions just in general, if you need help with research, again, like Carissa said, somebody mentioned tutoring. Um, this is the closest thing we have to tutoring is chat and setting up a consultation. Um, we do have research assistance for you if you need help finding secondary sources for your projects, if you need help finding a book, um, if you just have a general question about the libraries, um, we do have that chat on the library website and that link is in the chat, um, in the Zoom chat. So if you have a question, you can use that chat feature um, and somebody who works in the libraries will um, be there to answer your questions. Um, if for some reason we can't answer your question, we will get you in touch with someone who can. Um, we can also help you get started from your get started with your research on chat. Um, so if it's the middle of the night and you need help, like coming up with a paper topic because it's due tomorrow, or you need help finding sources, or for some reason you can't access an article and you really need it, that's really good for chat. Um, so you just let us know, and we can help you out with those things. If you'd prefer some one-on-one -on -one research help, you can set up a consultation with a librarian and that link is also in the Zoom chat, um, that Ask Us Now link. We can meet with you up to an hour on Zoom. Um, there are also some people who will be able to meet in person if you would prefer that. Um, you can schedule those consultations on the library website or you can also just email your subject librarian. So if you know who your subject librarian is or you're doing subject specific research, um, and you are really interested in meeting with someone who does a lot of research in your field and your discipline and your major, um, you can email your subject librarian directly. Um, we're going to have a workshop next week about subject specific research, but we will talk about that at the end. Um, but yeah, there are just a lot of ways for you to get help online as well. You don't have to be in the physical library spaces in order to get help with research or to get your questions answered. All right, and we had a lot of students in the poll asking about how to access OneSearch, things like that. So if you ask that question, this is the part we're getting to. So I'm gonna be talking about articles and databases. Um, several folks mentioned OneSearch by, one by name. 
uh, OneSearch is our catalog system that searches a lot of books, ebooks, videos, digital collections, maps, et cetera. But then it also searches a good portion of other articles you might need to do research for a class you're in. You can pop in a search term here. And again, we'll have other workshops that go into more detail about how to use it. Um, but the very basics is type in a few keywords of things you're looking for and hit search. Um, I do recommend that um, you are using keywords, not typing in a whole sentence, but that'll just help you out some more. Um, and then the other one I wanna mention is our articles and databases. And again, like Grace mentioned, we have a whole workshop next week about really diving into these two tools. Um, so just for today, we're just briefly mentioning them, but um, we can also pop some tutorials into chat if you are wanting to learn how to use them before next week's workshop. Um, these are available to you 24 seven anywhere in the world. If you are off campus, you do have to log in with your NetID and password to access them. Um, but you can do this from home, you can do this from the library, wherever you are, uh, you should be able to log into these and search them. All right, so that is the end of our formal recording. Uh, we're gonna pop the link to the end of section survey in chat. We would really love to hear what stood out to you today, what questions you still have, and if you are needing proof of attendance, that's gonna be the last question in that link. Um, and it will trigger an email sent to you that you can show your professor. So very exciting. And then we would also love to see you next week, Monday, August 30th at 2.15 PM. We're gonna be talking about subject specific databases and keywords. So for everyone who is asking about more about OneSearch, that would be a really great one 